Is this you? You would prefer to respond on your laptop, but because you've never gotten around to learning how to type in Korean before, you have to resort to thumb texting instead? Yep, that's me. Let's fix that, shall we? Psst, psst, psst. Hey, hey! Who, me? Yeah, you. What are you doing? I'm typing on this because I don't know how to type on this. Want to try today? Okay, but I don't have the sticker thingy to tell me where the characters are. You really don't need them. It's all muscle memory anyways. Okay then, do I need anything else to get started? Just grab some optimism and let's go. Sounds good to me. But no, you guys should have seen how long I procrastinated learning how to type in Korean. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Emma. And in this video, I want to share with you guys how I learned to type Hangul with 10 fingers in six steps. I'll be taking you firstly through the mindset to get started, then how to install your keyboard, as well as understanding how the Hangul keyboard is laid out. Then I'll be sharing some free applications that you can use and also some typing drills that you can work on. I'll also talk about how I include these typing exercises as part of my entire weekly language learning routine. First off, by isolating the typing skill and retyping pre-existing material. And second of all, to think and type on your own. And throughout the video, I'll also be sharing some good habits that I found really helped me build good muscle memory, stay consistent, and see progress in my typing. Let's get to it. Step number one, to ready your mindset. First of all, you have to ask yourself, do I really need this skill? And for me, within the first two years of studying Korean on and off, I really got away with just typing on my phone for like two years. But then as I started learning Korean more properly and my proficiency increased, I realized that I also had this need to be able to type longer passages and on a wider screen as well. The reason I procrastinated learning how to type in Korean for so long, I think is because it feels like I'm relearning a skill that I have already mastered, but in another language. I've been touch typing English since I was like six or seven. So having to learn how to type hunger feels like I'm rewinding myself all the way back there, which now that I think about it, isn't that a great way to revisit this childlike spirit of ours? Don't we all kind of want to go back to being a child again at some point? What better way than through typing? At one point I asked myself, can anyone else do this instead of me? Well, the answer is no. If I don't do this for me, then no one else can, period. And I saw this quote somewhere along the lines of, something that you put off until tomorrow will only take you 20 minutes today to complete. So that's when I was like, all right, let's strap in and do this once and for all. So let's go ahead and install our Korean keyboard. I'll be showing you guys on my Windows operating system. If you guys are using a Mac, I'll find another tutorial online, have it linked over here so you guys can follow. So what we wanna do is go to settings and then go into the search bar and type in keyboard. Go to edit language and keyboard options. Add a language, search for Korean and go ahead and install that. And now if you go to the bottom right hand corner of your device, there is an English option that you can change to Korean. And you can also switch between the languages by using the keyboard shortcut Windows space. But even in Hangul, you do have an English input mode and a Korean input mode. And an easier way to switch between them is to press your right alt key. You can see here. And once you see your car, you can start typing. Alrighty, as for the layout of the Korean keyboard, you'll realize how it's set up slowly as you start doing the drills. Please forgive my drawing. This is how your fingers are gonna be set up. So you will have your pointer fingers on the ri and all. Here are all the vowels and they can entirely be accessed with your right hand. 
As for the consonants, they can all be accessed with your left hand, like so. You will see that the vowels usually are placed in pairs pretty close to each other. For example, you have O and U, A, Y, A, Y, A, U, and U down here, A and A. You can access the Y and the Y by pressing the shift button, like so. Now over to the consonant side. Up top, you have all the consonants that have a sang equivalent, a double equivalent sang. You have sang piet, sang jiet, sang diet, sang giok, and sang xiot, right? And again, you can access all of them by pressing the shift button here. And down at the bottom, what you have are the aspirated consonants. So these are consonants that you blow air out with, such as k, t, ch, and p. Again, all the vowels are on your right hand, all the consonants are on your left hand. Personally, I still have some trouble with the aspirated consonants, so I still go back and do drills specifically for these four letters. As for free online apps that you can use, I recommend Korean Typing XYZ and Hankom Taja. Personally, I much prefer Korean Typing XYZ just because it's a little more clean and simple to look at and helps me concentrate a little better. But if you enjoy more colors and more movement, then Hankom Taja would be for you. Hankom Taja also has hand position guides if that is what you need. Okay, so let's hop on to Korean typing XYZ. Instead of drilling positions based on middle, top, bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to Hangul. Here, the characters are set into their syllable blocks, which I find to be a little bit more realistic when I'm looking at a sequence. Like this looks more digestible to me than this. It's pretty straightforward. You just go for the kyok up here, a, ah. kyok, ya. So at this point, even though your right hand is moving with the vowels, you might have a tendency to keep your left hand in the same place up here to get to the kyok like this, right? So what you don't want to do is do this, this one pressing motion, because if you're just doing this, I could be here, I could be here, I could be here, it's the exact same motion. And you don't really build muscle memory of learning where the kyok actually is. So what you want to do is every time you press a kyok, you want to bring your finger back to your starting position like this. And this way, you will build the muscle memory of moving your finger this exact amount in this exact direction to get to kyok, right? So move it back to its home position, okay? Same goes with ticket. So what you want to do is press, return it back to the starting position. Press, return. Press, return to starting position. Press, return, all right? You can move on to double vowels to practice your right hand coordination. So, kiok, eh, kiok, yeah. The shift. And once you're familiar with all these combinations, you can go ahead and move on to random. So I believe all these characters are pretty much gibberish. It's basically just helping you understand where everything is in relation to each other. Once you're through with this, you can go over to the words section, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, etc. And practice actual real words. 부지런히 그때 일이. As you can see, every word is starting with 기. And if you want to switch it up, what you can do is put the setting onto random, onto on, number of groups, number of words, into 200. And now that they're on random, you can practice typing words that start with different consonants. 되게. <laughs> Actually, when I was learning how to type, there was this other application that 
has a format very much like Typing Club. Now I cannot for the life of me find the Korean typing program, but it still has very good English typing drills, Chinese, Japanese, a lot of the European languages, Russian typing drills, if that is your target language. If only there was a Korean program on there, I'd be there right away. At this stage, you're pretty much ready to move on to typing longer sentences. And what I like to do here is to isolate my typing. Instead of coming up with my own thing to type out, I'll just retype some existing material. What this allows me to do is focus my entire mental energy on creating muscle memory and typing and less so on thinking about what I should be typing. For this, you can either go on to Hankom Taja under their short sentence, long sentence sections and practice there. Or what I like to do is grab some reading material that I'm already reading that week and retype that instead. These days I've been reading Korean folk tales for language learners and every week I try to read one passage as a way of understanding the culture a little bit better and also learning vocab within context. I usually do a couple of different activities with the passage itself and the final activity that I do is to retype the entire passage out onto my laptop. There is great incentive for me to type it because one, I don't have to generate my own thoughts to type out. And two, I'm basically revising the material that I'm learning that week. So I'm hitting two birds with one stone. The way this book is set up, the passages will get longer and longer, which will correspond with one, your Korean proficiency and two, your ability to type. But if you don't have this book on hand, I will be linking some other websites with Korean traditional tales right over here if you want to type that out instead, or anything would work really. If you like the news, go ahead and type that. If you like podcasts, there are podcasts with transcripts that you can use. I'll have some linked below. But yeah, the key is to use some study material that you're already learning that week. And that way you get maximum efficiency for all the skills involved. Another good habit that I try to nurture when I'm in typing practice mode is whenever I make a mistake on the keyboard, instead of just backspacing that one character, I will go ahead and backspace the entire syllable block. Because if I'm just backspacing the one character and pressing a replacement character, I'm really just teaching myself to press that one standalone key. But if I delete the entire syllable block, I now have a chance to learn the correct sequence of that syllable. Where does the consonant go? Which vowel comes before the other? Stuff like that. And this way, my fingers can get familiar with the sequence of characters that make up one syllable block. Of course, when I'm not in typing practice mode and I'm fine with just backspacing that one character, but when I do sit down for actual typing practice sessions, I try to follow the habit of deleting and retyping the entire syllable block. And the final step, step six, is to type out using your own thoughts. This is pretty much where we're trying to get to. Again, I try to incorporate this step with other material that I'm already using or learning that week. For instance, every week I learn a couple new grammar points. I will go ahead and retype it all out onto my laptop, as well as come up with some of my own sample sentences that uses those grammar structures. Again, one, I get to reinforce that grammar, and two, I get some typing practice in. Every week I also study with some podcasts, and if you're interested, I have the routine right over here. And the final step of that routine is I will go ahead and type a little comment or a summary or response to the podcast that I just listened to. And this way you can practice coming up with your own thoughts and then typing it out. Okay, that is the end of the video. If you haven't already, I highly encourage you to give this routine a shot. See how far you can progress with typing hangul if this is a skill that you really want to have. For me, it didn't take too long to remember where the vowels and consonants are. Granted, I still make mistakes with the aspirated consonants, but I found that the best thing I could do to progress in my typing is to stay consistent by incorporating typing as part of my language routine, by using the material that I'm already learning that week. So again, I get to revise my material, and two, I get typing practice out of it. And it feels like less of a standalone exercise and more part of like my entire routine. And at least for me, it makes it much more approachable. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do end up trying this routine out, please let me know how it goes for you in the comments down below. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.